This is the most powerful all AMD dual boot gaming PC that I've ever been able to put together over here on the channel. And I built this as a present for my best friend. I built it before Christmas and uh, by the time this video goes live, he's already got his hands on this. He's having a lot of fun with it, hopefully. He'll be coming from a 3060 laptop, which still puts down decent performance at 1080p. And when he's on the go, he can still use that. But when he gets home, he's got the option to run Windows 11 Pro or official Steam OS on this machine. And after building this, I want to build something similar. It won't be all AMD, but it'll be my main work PC for the next two to three years. And I will be using this case because I absolutely love it. But what we've got here definitely puts down some amazing performance when it comes to Windows 11 gaming or official Steam OS. And I really did opt for the parts we have here because it's fully compatible with Steam OS right out of the box with everything that I opted to use here. Because when it comes to the CPU, the system's running an AMD Ryzen 7 9800X3D. 8 cores, 16 threads, we know that X3D is a great gaming chip. It's inside of an ASRock B850 Challenger motherboard. 32 gigs of DDR5 at 7000 megatransfers per second, running in dual channel. It's got an AMD Radeon 7900 XTX with 24 gigs of VRAM. It's the ASRock Tai Chi version. 850 watt gold power supply, a one terabyte M.2 SSD with Windows 11 Pro installed, and another one terabyte M.2 SSD with official SteamOS installed on it. In this video, I wanted to focus on SteamOS because when I did the build video, we just took a look at Windows 11 running on this, and there's no doubt that this is an amazing performer. We ran some benchmarks over there, tested out some AAA gaming. I'll leave a link for that video in the description. It does contain the full build and testing for Windows 11 Pro. But by the end of the video, I do want to give you a little comparison between the frame rate and Windows 11 Pro versus SteamOS with this same setup using the same games at the same settings. Getting right in here to SteamOS, so far everything's been working great on this machine. I've got Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and obviously with specs like this, we're going to get some really good gaming performance. Speaking of that, from the performance section here, uh, we don't have any way to control the TDP or GPU clock. That's all going to be done from the BIOS. You could download a third-party application using Decky Loader, but since we're working with a desktop setup, we can tune everything directly from the BIOS, so that's what I've done. But we do have VRR as long as your display supports it. You can allow tearing, half-rate shading. We're probably not going to need that with this setup. A scaling filter. And again, we do have Wi-Fi, Bluetooth. We can bring this up and you see it's a bit small because I'm going to be running everything at 4K. So it might be a bit hard to see. I've tried to enlarge it in post to see if uh, we can get a better look at it. But real quick, let's head over to our settings and I'll show you that we've got official SteamOS here. So from system, we're going to move on down. We've got SteamOS Hollow 3.7.17. Didn't need to do any kind of like main branches or anything like that. We've just got stable, not even using the beta here. And of course, when it comes to the CPU, we've got that AMD Ryzen 7 9800X3D, eight cores, 16 threads, 32 gigs of DDR5 here running at 6,800 megatransfers per second. And as for the GPU, we've got the big boy here, the AMD Radeon RX 7900 XTX. So even compared to something like the 9060, this is gonna outperform it. And we've got 24 gigs of VRAM. So yeah, I mean, just taking a look at the specs here, we should see some decent gaming performance. So let's go ahead and jump into something real quick. Let's just start out here with Cyberpunk 2077. And I'll tell you one thing I love about having a more powerful CPU than let's say the Steam Deck itself is how fast it can compile those shaders for us. The very first game I wanted to test here was Cyberpunk 2077. We're at 4K Ultra with no FSR. And with the Ultra preset, it does automatically take FSR to quality. I made sure it was completely off here because that's how I tested it in Windows 11. And of course, we've got that 7900 XTX, which isn't the most powerful GPU on the market, but it does seem to be AMD's most powerful consumer GPU right now. And at these higher resolutions, it does outperform the 9060, so keep that in mind. We're going back a little bit for the next game. We've got Left 4 Dead 2 totally maxed out. It looks like this game does cap out at 300 FPS, at least in SteamOS. I haven't found a way to kind of change this. I'm sure we could get a bit more out of it, but running a game like this at 4K maximum settings 300 FPS is more than enough in my opinion. And I knew it was going to handle it with the specs we have here. 
Next, we've got The Witcher 3 at 4K Ultra. No FSR with NVIDIA Hairworks completely off. These AMD cards kind of fall on their face with Hairworks, even the 7900 XTX, especially in SteamOS. You can see we're seeing averages over 100 FPS. Was kind of expecting a little more out of this, and you know, I'm not nitpicking here. We're getting more than enough. The game plays just fine at 4K, but I was kind of hoping to be up in Let's the go. 140s on average with it, given the specs of this system. Doom the Dark Ages did really well. We're at Ultra Nightmare, but I did need to enable a little bit of FSR. We're set to quality right now, seeing an average over 80 FPS. And with it completely disabled, it does give us an average of around 65, but in some cases with large explosions on screen, it dipped under 60, which was kind of a surprise to me. Now, of course, you don't need to run this at Ultra Nightmare. You can get much more out of it. Just go into Ultra, still looks great, and you don't have to use FSR over there. Spider-Man 2, 4K, very high settings, no FSR. And keep in mind that very high with this game is its Ultra preset. So we're getting over 110 FPS on average. And when we're way up in the sky, just swinging around, it's over 120. And with all of the games that we're going to be testing in this video, I'm not going to be using frame generation in SteamOS with this setup. But just keep in mind, if you wanted to, you could double the frame rate on most of the games that support it with this 7900 XTX. If you're in the frame gen, it will work out really well. And the final game I wanted to test out here was Borderlands 4, which has given me issues in SteamOS with most systems that I've run it on. 4K Ultra FSR set to quality. By the end of this run, I had an average of 69 FPS and some major dips, not well below 60, but getting very close there. So with this one, if you're not gonna be using frame generation on the 7900 XTX in SteamOS, I would suggest taking it down to high settings. And to give you an idea on how this kind of stacks up against Windows 11 performance, I ran both games here at the same exact settings on obviously the same system. Borderlands 4 on SteamOS, we had that average of 69 and Windows 11 Pro, 74, Ultra, 4K, FSR set to quality. Cyberpunk 2077, 4K, Ultra, no FSR. In Windows 11, we had 84 FPS and SteamOS 85. And if I ran these again, we'd probably even out. I think CD Projekt Red did a great job optimizing for SteamOS or Linux in general with this one. Next up, we've got Forza Horizon 5, and there's actually a pretty big jump here from SteamOS to Windows 11. So in SteamOS, 4K extreme settings with no FSR, 157, still fully playable. You really don't need much more than that. But in Windows 11, I had an average of 191 FPS. And I kind of thought that this would be the case given that this is a Microsoft game. Obviously, they do want better performance over in Windows to kind of sell Windows. I also tested out Spider-Man 2 at 4K, very high, with FSR set to quality, and we actually got better performance in SteamOS, coming in at 111 FPS on average, and 103 in Windows 11. And finally, Red Dead Redemption 2, 4K Ultra, no FSR, in SteamOS, we had an average of 88 FPS, in Windows 11, 96. So these operating systems are really trading blows when it comes to gaming, and it really depends on what game you're running. You might get a little more in SteamOS, you might get a little more in Windows 11, but that's why I wanted to set this system up as a dual boot system. That way, you've got options to work with. But either way, I mean, I do think it's a great gaming system, and with the specs here, you're going to be able to run any AAA game. Obviously, with some of the new stuff and that 7900 XTX, you might need to enable a little bit of FSR, but if you're going up to 4K, it's not really noticeable taking FSR to quality, at least to my eye, with a good monitor. And personally, I do love this case, so I think I'm going to go with the black one for my personal build, and I may do it on the channel. I might not. If that's something you're interested in seeing, definitely hit the like button and think about subscribing so you know when I post the next one. And if you're interested in checking out the overall Windows 11 performance on this setup here, I'll leave a link to that full video in the description. Plus, I'll leave links to all the parts I used down below. But that's going to wrap it up for this video, and like always, thanks for watching.